Uh, good morning, all, and good day. at last year's conference. I am going to play a video. After the video presentation, I will be introducing the president of the British Blockchain Association. Uh, while we wait for the British, uh, the president of the uh, British Blockchain uh, Association to take the stage, let's sit back and enjoy the video. Okay, uh, welcome again. Um, I, let me introduce the president of the uh, British Blockchain Association. Uh, he is Dr. Nassim Nakve. Dr. Nassim, take the floor, please. Thank you very much, uh, Solomon. And a very warm welcome to all of you to the ISC 2021. It's a pleasure to have uh, all of you here today. Please, uh, can I ask, uh, if uh, can you hear me all right? If you can hear me okay, what I suggest is yes, you give a thumbs up uh, by using the emotion, uh, emoticon reactions uh, button. Uh, even if, uh, yes. yes, thank you, okay. perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, I'm just going to Solomon, can you see my screen? Um, yes, it is up. Okay, and you can see me as well. Yes, we are on Tom Tom Ney. Oh, yes, very good. So, um, welcome again. My name is Dr. Nassim Nakwi. I am the conference chair and the president of the British Blockchain Association. The conference hashtag is ISC2021. And I encourage you to share and tweet anything useful, uh, any quotes or pieces of information that you learn during the course of the conference. Please. Do not forget to tag the BBA, and we will make sure to reshare your message uh, from our uh, social media outlets. We are here today because we believe that blockchain has the potential to address one of the most pressing problems of our time, trust. And it would be an understatement to 
um, say that there is a global crisis of trust, a crisis which is far greater than that of COVID-19, I believe, and the one which has reached epidemic proportions. Societal trust, the, the currency on which we construct the fabric of our lives has eroded. It is devaluing much faster than any other currency in the world. With blockchain, we have hope, but Technology can't win this battle on its own. To restore lost trust, it is important that we educate and reform the human components of the DLT ecosystems as well. Blockchain is unique because it sits at the junction of technical social, legal, political, and other paradigms. So there is a strong need for interdisciplinary harmonization, both within the bounds of the individual branches of DLT and also the stakeholders. We must foster blockchain ecosystems where there is freedom for innovation, but at the same time, a sense of accountability. Building decentralized ecosystems is not enough. The real challenge is to build decentralized accountability. And accountability is the price that we pay for self-sovereignty. With great power, with great individual power, comes great responsibility. I would like to say that the policies, benchmarks, frameworks, recommendations must be based on trustworthy, reliable, and reproducible information. Information that is valid, information that is tested, that has come from high quality evidence, information that is backed by robust research. It's also important that we have a strategic intent and also senior level buy-in to develop and deploy blockchain interventions interventions that are impactful, that are reliable, and because of the fast pace of a blockchain economy, the use of resources must also be dynamically optimized in line with emerging evidence. So we must be flexible to accommodate new evidence and act upon new evidence. Finally, it is imperative that we establish multidisciplinary extended knowledge networks that are backed by holistic DLT innovation ecosystems, such as the one we have built at the BBA called the Center for Evidence-Based Blockchain, which is the world's first such initiative. It's a global think tank of industry experts, researchers, policymakers, blockchain institutions, and our members and partners. The theme of this year's conference, uh, as you may have seen uh, already, is success through synergy. The next generation leadership 
for extraordinary times. We are living in extraordinary times and the pace of change has been accelerated by COVID-19. We need a strong leadership that has the vision to make this world a better place to live. The leadership with a vision to be proactive in tackling with the challenges of the next decade. And above all, the leadership with integrity and empathy. I would like to thank our conference committee and session chairs for all their help in putting together this conference. And a very special thanks, of course, to Dr. Solomon Owakbule, who is uh, hosting uh, the conference today. So the plan is that we have uh, in the morning uh, abstract presentations. There are 10 minute presentations, 10 minutes each, and you will be marked on uh, according to a criteria, which includes uh, a statement of the research question, methodology, your conclusions, whether the, the abstract or your paper made any significant contribution to science and your overall presentation skills. Best abstracts will be announced in the afternoon and all abstracts that are presented today will be published in the JBBA. So you will be delighted to know that all researchers that are presenting their work today, uh, their work will be featured, their abstracts uh, in the JBBA, which is due in April, May this year. With that, I would like to invite Professor David Lee to say a few words, and then we uh, move on to our first session. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Dr. Nassim Nakhbe. Uh, Professor David Lee, are you able to hear us? Okay. Okay, so why we wait for uh, Professor uh, uh, David Lee, uh, he did record um, a video um, in case we end up uh, not able to have him here. I uh, will continue with the video. I think uh, he says, Solomon, that he has, has some problem with his mic. Uh, okay, he is, so. He's there, but he has a problem, but he can play the, the message that he recorded this morning. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, give us some few seconds. The video will be up. Dr. Nassim Nabi, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Singapore University of Social Sciences and the Blockchain Association of Singapore, I would like to thank the British Blockchain Association for inviting us to be part of the event and also to congratulate the association for organizing another significant research conference. This conference comes at a time of profound disruption worldwide as countries take extraordinary actions to vaccinate the populations, to open their borders for travelers. It is excellent that we can all meet online for a very prestigious conference. However, SUSS is still looking forward to a physical or at least a hybrid PBA conference in Singapore when the opportunities arise in the future. It will be a great pleasure for our university and the Blockchain Association of Singapore to welcome all to Singapore when the conditions are more favorable. 2021 has been a special year for the global blockchain community. We have seen many developments in Asia. Cambodia Central Bank has launched a project Bakon, a blockchain-based central bank approved digital currency fully backed by the US dollar or the local currency real. 
the e renminbi or ECNY and DCEP of China using the Bitcoin technology of UTXO. Furthermore, many interoperable projects in Asia, including BSN, that integrates private consortium and public blockchains, are attracting global attention. Traditional institutions are also embracing cryptocurrencies as a way for business expansion and the ASEAN largest bank, DBS Bank, is taking the lead in this area. In Singapore, blockchain is used in the project Ubin for central bank digital currency, trade, trade finance, supply chain, cell sovereign identity, national education certification, international travel health passport, and other government services. Hong Kong, Thailand and the Philippines and other Asian countries are also adopting blockchain in many areas. In SUSS, we have also initiated the SUSS Smart Mesh Living Lab to experiment with P2P communication and blockchain for trade and connectivity, or in short, BTC for SMEs, linking six international blockchain projects initiated by Enterprise Singapore. Besides, the rules and regulations are very encouraging for blockchain and the development of the token economy. The cryptocurrency and token community is also forging ahead with tokenization, DeFi, and F NFTs. The image file of the digital art by Beeper connected to a non-fungible token was minted just last month and serves as a certificate of authenticity recorded via blockchain technology. Christie Auction House, which hosted the sale a few days ago, accepted payment in Ether with a value of US dollar 69.3 million from a Singapore NFT fund. Such is the advancement that digital art form, music and videos are being tokenized and fetching values that are hard to comprehend by those outside the blockchain industry. Many will view this episode as a speculation or a marketing gimmick and will have nothing to do with it. Others will heed SEC Commissioner's advice mm -hmm. given in her recent speech to bankers. By building halfway to the new world technology rather than shutting it off, you will make your institution future brighter and your client relationship stronger. Commissioner Hester Pierce's foresight and views are refreshing especially from a regulator. I'm glad that she will be speaking today and I'm looking forward to learning more from her. The Monetary Authority of Singapore released a consultation paper on the proposed new Omnibus Act for the financial sector on 21st July 2020. The consultation period uh, was closed on 20th August 2020. The proposed Act is a standalone legislative framework that aims to enhance and consolidate MAS regulatory power concerning financial institutions and the digital services across the financial sector, including technology risk management, AML, CTF, virtual service provider, and others. If and when implemented, the Omnibus Act is not just a tweet of the Security Act, but the beginning of a fresh look at token law and is likely to be significant and impactful to the overall Singapore Token Services Regulatory Framework. Under the leadership of our leader, um, Editor-in-Chief of JBBA and President of BBA, Dr. Nassim Navid and Dr. Murid Hussein, Secretary of BBA, the BBA conference has developed a strong reputation for bringing leading researchers together with thoughtful discussion on governance, privacy protection, ethics, strategy, risk management, incentives, and project management. The authors of these research projects are respectable scientists. And as an editor for the journal, I'm delighted to see the high quality discussion of cutting edge research to broaden the frontier of blockchain knowledge. It is especially timely to discuss ethics, privacy, and inclusion. Given the tens and thousands of page views and thousands of unique visitors each month from from more than 150 countries, I hope that the journal can continue to meet the needs and quest for professional knowledge in blockchain. And of course, that's with all your help. 
is the Blockchain International Scientific Conference is an excellent platform for expanding this mission of connecting the blockchain ecosystem. It is supported by no fewer than 41 international organizations, university and corporate conversion in emerging technologies, risk management, blockchain adoption, digital assets, tokenization, supply chain, and logistics. It is indeed challenging to communicate with many senior executives who have never been in contact with crypto tokens. Decentralized finance and non-fungible tokens. If we can produce evidence that is conv convincing and we can communicate in a way that's easy to understand, there will be many more to join us in our quest to explore the latest innovations, implementation and strategies to drive blockchain business forward for the good of mankind. It is currently heartening to see regulators, corporate leaders, academicians, and research students joining us in evidence-based research and disseminating the research output through this conference. Like me, I'm sure many of you are looking forward to attending the sessions and learning from them. Finally, I would like to thank all participants and the organizations for their support and BBA staff for their organizations and contributions. I look forward to an exciting time with engaging discussions ahead. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, so the next session will be coming up. Um, that would be the uh, Blockchain Research Abstract Presentation 1. So I'm going to end this session now. So we will all go to the lobby in preparation for the next session. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you.